blessings, everybody. And welcome back to our study in Matthew, part two. And this is the second video of lesson one. And today we're looking at the 14th chapter, the first 21 verses. So be certain that you take time, go back, examine that, read it, take your time with it. What you're going to see is that there's two big uh, stories that are going on right here, which may look like they don't have anything related to one another, but they do. I suspect if you did your homework with us that you saw the context, and that's what I'm going to be driving at, what I want us to see today. The first part we see Herod. Herod was the son of Herod the Great. Herod was a, te a tetrarch. He was the leader over the land here. He'd heard about Jesus. He actually thought that Jesus was John the Baptist risen from the dead because he heard of all the miraculous powers and the thing that was happening through Jesus. Now, Herod had had John arrested, had him bound, and had him put in prison. He did this because Herodias, Herod's wife, John the Baptist had come and said, it's not lawful for you to have her as a wife because she used to be your brother's wife. And apparently some types of shenanigans from history, we know there's some serious things that happened right there, and Herod took her. And it infuriated Herod that John would say that. So he really wanted to kill him, but he feared the crowd. They thought John to be a prophet. And so Herod was trying to figure out something to do with this. Well, he had a big birthday party for himself. And so Herodias' daughter came in and danced and pleased him so that he promised her, said, I'll give you anything you want, up to half my kingdom. And apparently he was quite serious about it. Well, she didn't know what to do, so she goes to her mother, and her mother says, tell him you want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Well, she comes back and tells him that, and Herod realized he was trapped, but Herod was a fool. He was full of pride, full of hubris. He was fearful and fear-filled, and he was a weakling. And it says that because of the guest that he went ahead and lopped off John the Baptist's head, he wouldn't even back down because of that type of pride in his life. Well, Jesus heard about John's death. When he heard about it, he withdrew to a secluded place. Now, he didn't do this out of fear. It was simply the kind of thing that we would do. You know, when we have someone close to us who died, there's times when you want to get off by yourself, you know, just to be with God, just to think about some things. Well, the people heard about it, and they followed, and they found Jesus. And Jesus saw the large crowd, and he felt compassion, and he healed their sick. And that's what I want us to see that the compassion of the Lord was in the midst of a time when he was really seeking to be secluded. The disciples came to him and said, you know, at the end of the day, they said, Master, you need to send these folks away. Uh, we don't have any food to feed them. And he says, you give them to eat. That's actually the way the Greek is structured. And they said, we don't have anything. And he said, what do you have? Well, this is the five loaves and the two fish. Well, he blessed it. He broke it. He blessed and broke and gave to the disciples. Then they went out to distribute and somehow, we don't know how this happened, it kept multiplying and kept multiplying to such a degree that they had 12 baskets left over. Now, here's the big picture of what I want us to see today, because we're somewhat familiar with both these stories. But did you understand that the context of the feeding of the 5,000 was Jesus really seeking to have a time of seclusion out of hearing that John had been killed? He saw the need of the people, their healing, their sickness, and that they wanted food at the end of the day. He met that need, regardless of his feeling what was going on in his life. You know, I think it's a real important principle for us, and it begs the question, will we do likewise? I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Cullman, Alabama, and I thank you for being with me, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.